Hello everybody and uh, today we are going to close uh, actually the, the topic on the REST APIs because uh, last time we saw the server side so how to implement the APIs in, uh, in Express and the Node.js and uh, today we'll see how to do that on the server side, on the client side uh, we already mentioned many times that uh, uh, recent browsers have a new API uh, called uh, Fetch and uh, uh, this fetch api allows us to uh, um, call uh, external apis or uh, in general execute external http requests uh, in a very simple way and, uh, and uh, in a very modern way by using asynchronous functions and promises and so on uh, so that's uh, uh, what will allow our web our front end web application to do calls uh, uh, on the server side uh, we learn uh, in this uh, video how to uh, send an, uh, an HTTP request in an asynchronous way, so without uh, uh, destroying the current web page and without uh, disturbing any other script uh, which is running on the page. How to load this data always asynchronously, so how to wait and, and retrieve the response. Um, and uh, how to uh, handle multiple and simultaneous requests uh, if we need uh, uh, to do that uh, or interrupting them and also uh, uh, some idea about uh, uh, some more powerful library that we may use if uh, uh, the fetch primitives are not enough for us. So let's uh, mm, dig into the, uh, the specific topic and just remember why we need the asynchronous JavaScript requests. Um, remember that we had uh, an application loaded into our uh, JavaScript uh, runtime and uh, uh, this uh, application uh, needs uh, to send uh, some data to the server or to receive some data from the server uh, so we have an application server which is our let's say rest server implemented in express and uh, probably we need uh, to read or write some data in the database and this data will be encapsulated in json and need to be sent back uh, to the application so we want uh, the front-end application and the back-end uh, application there uh, that contain the REST APIs uh, to be able to communicate with each other and for doing that uh, the JavaScript uh, uh, source code must make a new asynchronous calls to the web server uh, and so that uh, the application server can be activated and can return the required information or can receive the, the information in the case of a, of a post for example um, uh, so if we go back uh, 20 years uh, we saw that uh, every time the, the, the client uh, needs to make a request uh, that would destroy the page so a new request uh, will provide a new html page uh, that will uh, regenerate all the user interface mm -hmm. um, and so this is something that uh, uh, we don't want to do anymore so uh, this would be a synchronous uh, uh, request Synchronous request means that the, the current request will end the life of the current web page and will start a new web page from scratch from zero. This is not what we do. Uh, we want to do that asynchronously so that we don't want to block the, cor the current uh, page. We, want, we don't want to move to a new page. So this is something that originally was not uh, designed in the browser um, engines uh, because the browser was just uh, thought as a device to display pages. So every new request is a new page or a component of the page. Now we are requesting something uh, in the same context of the same page and the data received will be used, uh, for example, to modify the DOM and so to update the page uh, asynchronously with respect to the, to the data that we received. And this uh, uh, started uh, uh, not many years ago, like uh, in, the, in the end of the, of the, of the century, when uh, there was a new uh, object that was first introduced by Internet Explorer, uh, uh, it was called uh, the HTTP, uh, sorry, XML HTTP request object. Uh, it was now a new addition to the um, JavaScript uh, standard library, and the APIs uh, offered by the browser. And that object uh, uh, enabled uh, for the first time to uh, execute an asynchronous call in JavaScript. And uh, uh, that uh, uh, opened the way uh, for uh, many new applications, many new pat application patterns also. And uh, uh, for example, the first one that uh, uh, really on the, on the large scale took uh, advantage of that uh, was uh, the Google Autocomplete. 
so for the first time while uh, while you were writing something in the google search box uh, that you will uh, see the completions okay for at that time it was uh, revolutionary so it was not it was something that nobody could uh, had done before and after that after a couple of years uh, gmail came out uh, that uh, showed us how to create complete applications on the front end on one that run on one single html page mm -hmm. So that was the, 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 the early times uh, and uh, all the asynchronous uh, were done with this uh, HTTP XML request. Uh, by the way, mm, of course, there are uh, some security concerns uh, that were uh, pending for several years. So for several years, it was only possible to make a synchronous request uh, to the same origin. So to so the same web server that already gave you the, the initial JavaScript. Uh, today this has been generalized so there are more general solutions to make asynchronous requests uh, across different servers and we'll study that uh, uh, in a future lecture when we deal about this course uh, um, architecture this course uh, standard for um, cross-origin requests mm -hmm. but for the moment we just uh, uh, forget about this issue so if we go back in time the X, X, XHR uh, object uh, was introduced, uh, like uh, we said, in 1998. It was standardized in 2006, but was implemented uh, uh, a couple of years before by, by all the browsers. And it was a way to make asynchronous requests. Uh, uh, it was not very easy to use. It was complex. Uh, it exposed a lot of internal states, so you uh, had uh, actually to work a lot <laughs> uh, to, to manage correctly an asynchronous request. Uh, in fact, there was uh, uh, most uh, JavaScript libraries, uh, so for example, jQuery offered you a, a very um, simplified methods and simplified uh, uh, functions uh, to be able to do these uh, asynchronous requests uh, um, uh, because H XHR, XML, HTTP request was a, such, a, such a low level object. Say. Um, okay, uh, browsers today still support this method, but uh, we don't recommend it because it's just too much work. Uh, we will uh, directly go and study the modern way of uh, uh, doing asynchronous calls, which is through the fetch API. Okay, so it's the modern way of doing an asynchronous call. So instead of using X XHR, uh, today we use uh, uh, fetches. Uh, the good point is that a fetch API is clean, is promise clean, it's asynchronous clean, so that it will return promises. And so you can process all the asynchronous uh, behavior using the then catch a pattern of a promise or an await um, uh, um, keyword uh, so that you can control more easily instead of having nested callbacks that are also asynchronous that also involve the server and so on and they also define <coughs> uh, request and response objects uh, so that the request and response are not just uh, you know texts uh, uh, text fragments but they are uh, full javascript objects with uh, with all the needed properties um it's uh it's today is well supported in every browser since basically 2016 2017 so it's uh, uh more nearly four years that all the browsers are supporting that except the internet explorer that uh, was discontinued by by microsoft also um so but all the other browsers are, uh, are really mature and uh, and sub, uh, support this method uh, uh, very um very well okay uh, uh, what is the API? Oh, basically the, the fetch API is composed of one function. It's called fetch. So window of fetch is fetch. It's a fetch method in the global space that has only one, one uh, in the minimal form, it has one parameter, which is the, the URL of the resource that we want to request. So if we want to fetch, uh, to call, for example, a get method for an API, we will, use, we will use fetch with the URL of the API address. And that will start an asynchronous request. Um, the, uh, the fetch method will return you a promise. So the fetch returns immediately without waiting for the actual get, uh, get HTTP get to be completed. The fetch method returns immediately and returns an, a promise object. Okay? And the promise will uh, only resolve later. So we are already used to this kind of asynchronous behavior so we go forward when we are recording in the then part of the promise uh, what we want to do later on hmm? and um, and uh, later on the, the resolution of the promise uh, will yield a response object 
so when the promise is resolved we get an object of type response with all the information about the HTTP response uh, and the promise is rejected only in the case of network errors so just keep in mind if uh, so there are some network problems then uh, the promise the fetch promise is rejected if there are some application problems so maybe uh, your server generates an error maybe a 500 or a 400 HTTP code it's not uh, an, an error from the fetch point of view it's a good request uh, and so you will find the error code in the response object so we have two levels to check one is net the, uh, did the network uh, HTTP connection complete correctly yes so if then if, if in this case uh, you are in the then branch of the of the promise because the promise is resolved of course at that point uh, uh, you can check, you should check the status code of the response to check whether it was a 200 code or there was another kind of error. But there are, they are application errors, uh, but uh, where the fetch was um, considered to be success successful. If the promise is not successful, so the promise is rejected, you are in the catch block, uh, then it means that we had uh, some network error even before uh, dealing with the uh, application errors. Okay. Uh, this is uh, some way inspired by the, the way the jQuery method Ajax uh, was working, but uh, uh, since we are not uh, uh, familiar with jQuery, we don't uh, uh, care about the, math the differences. So, as we said, uh, fetch ba is based on promises, so you can use it uh, easily with then or await. This is a very minimal example. Uh, imagine you have uh, some JSON endpoint or some, uh, some API that you can, you can call on a server, so you fetch on that URL and the return value here is a promise. So you can check what happens uh, in the then case uh, uh, with, the, with a then or with an await hmm? in both cases. Uh, of course, in the case of then, uh, you can, for example, uh, analyze the response and extract the JSON from the body. We'll see all the details about the JSON object in a moment. Um, we can extract uh, the JSON from the body. And uh, by the way, um, this uh, we are inside the promise. So uh, the response of JSON is again a promise. So when you are inside the promise, uh, what you return is uh, also a promise. So uh, uh, this value here is returned and processed. Uh, so you see this double dang here. The first then is for resolving the fetch. The second then is for the re resolving uh, the extraction of the data from the response. And this data is then logged to the console. Mm -hmm. So again, we cannot do anything synchronously after we start an asynchronous call. So everything should wait until the completion of the first one. And then, uh, then only then take uh, the output of, of the previous step and do something about that. Uh, the same can be done with using a wait uh, more or less. Uh, so in this case we are blocking the execution here so we say okay you, i know the fetch is asynchronous so i wait for it for it to be resolved and when it's resolved i uh, i await for its uh, um, uh, data to be extracted so in, since response response is a, in, is an asynchronous value again uh, it's it's a promise again and so uh, you will need to await also for the extraction of the body content mm -hmm. The body can be long, so it's uh, delivered asynchronously, but this is just a detail. So it's up to you whether you prefer to deal with the promises using the then chains or with the await uh, statement depends also on how you want to um, uh, deal with your program. But they are totally equivalent. Eh? Fetch doesn't care. Fetch just returns your promise and then how you deal with the promise, whether with the then um, callback or with the uh, async, uh, the await uh, keyword is the same. So we mentioned many times the response object. A response object is returned in the case of, of a fulfilled promise, so a good promise that uh, was completed. And uh, it, this object has some common fields. Uh, so this is the, is the result of the fetch. So where do you find all these fields? In the result, so in the then param um, parameter of your callback. Hmm? Uh, so in this case, it would be here, this response is uh, uh, the, the, the parameter of your callback function for the then case hmm? here. And uh, in this case, uh, in the case of always, if the return value is inside here, this variable that we save here. Hmm? So we, it's called response because we call it response. It's our name here. Hmm? 
um, we have an OK boolean value which is very handy because it checks whether the response code was uh, 200 or something and so it means that uh, uh, everything will not right uh, with the request uh, if we want more details about the status code we can read dot status property which gives you the number the three digit number or the status text which gives you the the english text um, the type uh, whether this is a cross uh, uh, origin request uh, again we'll deal that we, uh, about later the url in the case there were some redirects so maybe the response is from a different url than the uh, the one you requested and then the body that will uh, of course uh, contain the the, the real uh, value that we want to to get um, we can also in the response uh, uh, get all the headers so for example there's a field uh, the headers the property headers in the response uh, from which you can get uh, all the headers that we want uh, that you are interested in so here we have some uh, example of the values that can be returned by this kind of statements here uh, so imagine you have already this uh, headers col um, collection from which you can get uh, all the others and if a network is missing it will return simply a, a null uh, value um, or undefined error handling uh, as i mentioned the promise is only reject rejected if there are some errors uh, at the network level and not at the http uh, level and so any http uh, status value which is wrong in some way always returns a fulfilled promise so always remember to uh, to check a response dot okay and uh, um, maybe in some cases also some headers need to be checked uh, to understand whether the request was completely uh, satisfied it was co correctly satisfied uh, and also remember to put a catch in case of other types of errors mean mainly network errors or connectivity errors that could not uh, um, deliver an HTTP response okay so we have this always these two le levels of error checking uh, the first is uh, uh, checking response.ok okay. uh, if not uh, then we have a problem probably and so uh, it's an application level problem uh, and the catch uh, later on that will catch uh, all the block uh, all the processing here we have then 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 and we can catch uh, an error uh, when the response was not successful by the way for the behavior of the catch block uh, even if we throw something uh, throw some exception inside uh, the, the, the the processing blocks of the promise this will new will generate will reject the promise automatically and so also in this case uh, so when response okay is not valid there's not here in front uh, then it will be catched here so in this case we are uh, both catching uh, um, network errors uh, as normally and also application errors uh, for example here we are throwing an exception here or throwing an exception there when we uh, some checks uh, some checks are not uh, uh, satisfied so this is a way uh, their, their uh, promise could be rejected directly by fetch or we could reject it by the uh, uh, during our processing through this uh, throw exception so in some in some way these throws uh, will will delay uh, the processing of the message uh, until here so here we can process uh, correctly process all the errors that went uh, uh, through the, the process so it's better to have one place here at the end uh, and then analyze what went wrong uh, at this point uh, of course here we are just uh, console.log because we just an example but in reality we should uh, we should do something different depending on the, what went wrong uh, this uh, is enough uh, basically for forget requests uh, but if you want to make a more complex request with another method for example uh, we add a second parameter to to the fetch uh, function so the first one the uh, first one always is the resource address and the second is an initialization object an object to init the request hmm? uh, so we are talking about the request here so uh, the fetch parameter that will send the request to the server um, and uh, this object uh, has several properties uh, the most important one is method so we can uh, define a method different by get for example a post method we can define additional headers to be inserted uh, and so it's a headers in a, it's an object with many properties one for every uh, header that we want to add in when applicable we may have a body 
in the request and uh, okay other, uh, other details just i will just draw your attention to the signal project uh, signal uh, property that will be used uh, to abort the request uh, in the um, in case we don't need the, the fetch response anymore i will see some uh, slides about this uh, in a moment so if we want to customize the, the request uh, and uh, this must be done every time we need to send a method a requ a request with a method different from get uh, or a request with a body mm -hmm. and uh, so we, we need to pass an object uh, to the fetch method and this here we have an example a fetch with an address url and then an initialization object so initialization for the request the methods uh, the headers and the body mm, can be specified as uh, this init object here in the embraces mm -hmm. Uh, headers is uh, a nested object so if we want to specify more than one header you need to uh, put them in inside uh, uh, the headers and just remember that the, the key of this object should be the header uh, and mo in most of the cases the headers have a hyphen in them and so they are not valid identifiers so always remember to put the quotes here and there um, to avoid syntax errors in, in JavaScript and okay after that uh, we just have the normal processing of the of the promise and uh, with uh, the response object that can be used for um, for additional processing okay so when whenever you want to uh, add new headers or change the method uh, always remember the second parameter of fetch is what uh, does your work um, in uh, in a post case uh, you probably want to send in the body not just a string like this uh, but an object so maybe you have an object uh, with different properties uh, so strings and arrays and so on and you want to send them in your post so when you are posting a new object uh, to a, a rest api endpoint for example and uh, at that point uh, uh, you in the body of course you should put a json version of your object so the object here is just a javascript object with string stringy file you are converting them to the json format of the same object and you are sending them in post and you must remember to set the content type to application slash json even when we are dealing interactively with the rest client we should we always have to remember to set this header because otherwise the server will not know how to decode the body of the of the request so in this case we are selling we are telling the server well i'm giving a body and this body is in the in json format because it's not the default uh, format if we don't specify that so if we want the server to be able to decode this object just remember this this header uh, should always be, be present in the case of uh, of JSON. you can also do more complex things uh, here we have an example i won't go into my details about this uh, about uh, uploading a file for example mm, uh, so input type uh, equal to file is the is the button for uploading files uh, and uh, um, in this case again uh, uh, we have the body uh, which is the the data coming from the file and then uh, we have uh, uh, all, all the all the processing for um, for, for the response uh, but basically in this case uh, the data is uh, the file name uh, to be sent here and uh, instead of just the, the content mm -hmm. so in this case there is this form data uh, object uh, that is, uh, is used uh, in order to encapsulate more complex uh, uh, form uh, information for example like uh, uploads mm -hmm. uh, but in many cases uh, in so we, we just uh, uh, our needs are just satisfied by a json format uh, and otherwise if we need uh, to send a complex form uh, then we can use this form data and uh, insert into this form data all the uh, values that you need to send and that will be encoded uh, in the form encoding uh, format of HTTP. Um, about the response, uh, one one field that uh, we mentioned but we didn't uh, discuss was the was the body um, property. Okay, so we saw the OK. Let me go back. Uh, we saw the uh, OK uh, property, the status. Uh, and uh, but uh, we didn't uh, uh, go into detail about the body which is of course a property of the response and uh, um, the body can be uh, already um, processed in, in several times in several um, ways um, the body 
is only is a stream is not a string hmm? because potentially it could be long so the javascript doesn't wait for all the uh, body to be available and doesn't copy it uh, from one string to another it's a real-time string that you're reading so uh, the trick is that once you call one of these methods either one of these methods the body is consumed it will not it will never be available anymore okay in this request so you can call these functions only once you just should remember to store these functions um, in, in, store, store the results of these functions immediately uh, well not really immediately because these are promises hmm? because since uh, uh, the body is, on, is arriving with the stream you you specify how you want to extract this, the body and then you wait until the body is finished uh, and the promise and so you you get a promise that will be resolved when the body is finished hmm? so it's not just extracting a property from from the object because the property is not there it's a stream that you're reading hmm? uh, so in this case if we want the body or as a pure text for example an html page you call the dot text method uh, otherwise uh, you may call json and will uh, analyze the body and parse that uh, as a json object and return you the object so this is the method that we are most likely uh, to be using uh, in our programs uh, the response dot body property uh, well is not really uh, used directly so all of this of course use the body uh, this is the, uh, the underlying stream so if we want to do something low level by reading chunk by chunk all the stream data it's available in the body but in most of the cases we just want the, the, the complete body and to process the, day, the, the body in this way um, another option is the form data object uh, in the case uh, the, the body is formatted in, the, in that way but in our cases probably most of the cases will be JSON or in some simpler cases uh, uh, would be just uh, just plain text hmm? um, and so what we uh, so this is the, is the basics uh, for a single request we'll see more in, in the example that we do in the next uh, video uh, where we'll complete the example about the exam scores uh, i will just uh, put you some some examples uh, here and discuss them about uh, um, how to handle multiple requests so if we, if i need to do multiple fetches hmm? Uh, how can I manage them? So the simpler case uh, is when I have uh, uh, sequential fetches. So maybe, for example, I want to read the list of users and then uh, the details of a given user name hmm, of the first one. So before doing the second request, uh, I need, of course, the result from the first one. So this is easy, for example, using the await. Hmm? So I, I ask for the list of users when the list uh, and the way for that when the list uh, is available i'm extracting the json i'm parsing the body with the json method away await again because json returns a promise and doesn't return the data immediately and then i have the json object here users i pick the first one of the users and then i have a user object that i can use to uh, issue a second fetch so the await or the then hmm, uh, as you prefer with the syntax uh, um, methods uh, uh, allow you to wait until one request is uh, completed before uh, issuing a, so a second request so each of them is, a, is, a, is an asynchronous request but you are executing them sequentially serially one after the other uh, if uh, uh, the different calls don't need uh, to have uh, um, a call doesn't all the other calls don't need to have the results of the first one in order to proceed you can also run all the fetches in parallel so uh, you can use the promise.all method that takes an array of promises and runs all of them uh, at the same time and all these promises could be uh, fetches so for example in this code so you, <laughs> you could take some time to read it but uh, you are uh, you have a set of urls that you want to call uh, in the real case it will be probably more complex because maybe you also have some body parameters and so on this is the simple case you have some urls uh, and for each of them you create uh, a fetch promise okay so uh this arrow function will will map uh, the url and uh, the ar this array of urls to an array of promises because promises are what this expression returns Okay. in this case uh, we have the first promises uh, promise which is the uh, the response 
but we are already chaining the second promise uh, that extracts the text so it's a promise in this case that will be satisfied when the text is decoded and all of them uh, are launched in, in parallel here when we once we call uh, um, once these are uh, once we, we call the fetch method uh, they, they are uh, um, started all the requests so we, we, are, we are running them here promise.all and we are waiting until all of them are resolved and then we have all the bodies in an array see so it's an array of the different bodies that we received from the different uh, uh, requests so erl1 uh, was completed and so we have the first one of the bodies and url2 will be in the second position of this array of bodies and so on so in this case we have uh, different uh, requests that go in parallel one, once all the requests have completed then we process the bodies we could also it depends of course in the application what we want to do to run we could also run all the promises in parallel and then prom, uh, process uh, the text uh, in, um, as soon as uh, each promise will arrive each request will complete so the difference is here is that we are uh, promise.all only the fetch operations and then we are uh, processing the results uh, as they arrive so we want to launch launch the requests and then uh, when we uh, we have an array here of promises that are only the fetch promises and they will resolve one one by one and for each of them uh, we can uh, extract the, the text uh, result here mm -hmm. so it depends we here we of course can process the results uh, as soon as they arrive instead of waiting for all of them to be available uh, it's more complex to write uh, it's more asynchronous so things are a bit more unpredictable because some response can be uh, earlier or later than, than some others but it's in, in a way more efficient mm -hmm. uh, it's up, up to us of course to uh, to manage uh, the balance between the additional complexity and the additional performance in this case um, there's also a way if uh, you have a, a fetch request that you issued and you don't need it anymore uh, to cancel the request hmm? it's uh, maybe the request is too long it takes too much time uh, and so maybe something has happened in your application so you don't need uh, to um, to have the answer for the request of course uh, uh, it's uh, it only makes sense for a get request okay when you are getting some information for a post request or for a put request you never know whether the server already processed the data so cancelling that doesn't make much sense hmm? because you really don't know whether the server already received the post and already processed that or we see that, that hasn't received that so you cannot really have the control of, over what happens when you cancel that but when you're making a get maybe for a long document uh, or from a, from a slow server if you want to abort the, this request you can do that uh, uh, with this uh, pattern that uh, just requires you to create some uh, abort controller object uh, and uh, um, calling the method on this uh, con uh, abort controller object uh, will uh, issue a signal and this signal can be specified uh, in the fetch uh, init object okay so in the object for the fetch uh, one of the parameters were uh, one of the, pro or the property was signal in this case it would be the signal emitted by a controller in this case an abort controller that actually uh, this signal will be generated when uh, the abort method is called so from somewhere else if you have access to this controller object and this controller is closed in this uh, um, asynchronous called uh, then uh, you can decide to interrupt that specific uh, fetch so you don't you don't need to have the reference to this fetch so it's different from the timeout for ti for interrupting a timeout you need a reference to the timeout object here you just need a reference to the controller object that was used to create the fetch mm -hmm. so it's easier you can do it uh, from even uh, objects that are not directly related to this uh, function it's a uh, it's a corner case you don't need to do that uh, very often but in the case you need you have the, the information here um, so usually fetch are quite uh, uh, easy and powerful to use we tend to use them all the time when we need to create the front ends uh, but uh, uh, there are some libraries that are commonly also used in some cases uh, uh, to make them even easier 
uh, in particular one uh, alternative library is called axios um, it's a library that a lot of people use uh, to um, to make better fetches uh, basically and so it, it also works uh, in older browsers uh, it also works uh, in node.js where fetch is not available that's one of the reasons why we still didn't uh, uh, make real uh, asynchronous programming in, in node because uh, fetch is not that primitive and uh, and there's also an easier way to 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 cancel a request and also an automatic way to cancel a request have a specified timeout so uh, there's some more uh, say predefined behavior if you are calling uh, fetch through the axios library um, and also it's uh, a bit better in json conversion so you don't need to really remember to stringify and to set the the headers uh, all the um, all the all the small errors that uh, you happen to do every time so if you want uh, you can uh, check if you feel that you are really using fetches a lot uh, you can check the access library uh, which is not much different uh, uh, from from the fetch of course you see access instead of fetch uh, you have an init, an init object here in this case the url is uh, inside the object instead of uh, being the first parameter but doesn't make any big difference here uh, you see that you can set a timeout and you can directly de declare the object that will be serialized automatically into into json in this case uh, and um, and then we have also the then and the catch uh, which are very uh, which handle the promise uh, in a very similar way to the fetch case hmm. so basically this uh, is not a uh, big library it's uh, like the fetch is a library with only uh, one method uh, basically uh, one uh, yes one method which is the fetch method uh, there are these two additional objects uh, that we learned is the request uh, uh, object which is uh, um, not, not not really a, an object but rather an initialization object that specifies all the parameters of the request and then we have the response object uh, that uh, gives us uh, immediately the the metadata about the request so the okay the status code and so on and with a further promise it also gives us the body and then we see we saw all the details for extracting for inserting the json remember to set in the request remember to set the content type and the stringify the body and for extracting the json it's easier because we just have to use the uh, response dot json uh, promise to get the, the result so that will be the techniques that we may, we may use in our application to call the method from the REST API. And that will be the subject of the next video. Thank you.